Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Just going to go through the live ladder and then I'm going to go through the matchups. And then at the end, after that part, after I talk about the matchups as well, I'm going to talk about my trades and where I'm going and what the future of my team will bring. Because I've got some sort of idea, not everything quite clear. I mean, I am struggling with the buy rounds as well, but we'll talk about that after. So currently in the league ladder, I'm sitting on top, obviously. Long live the king is second, and Mario FC third. So, they, you know, these guys are very strong. Which Ablett, I'm very surprised he's fourth. I mean, it's no... I mean, that's actually a good thing for Witch Ablett. I mean, he's sneaking under the radar. And Max Spuds as well. I mean, and that's another guy who is sneaking under the radar as well. Stan Sparker is not sneaking under the radar. I've noticed him because he's scoring quite well. I'm actually fearful of him. I mean, I might have actually beaten him already, but that doesn't mean I'm not fearful of him. I already am, because he seems like he's really got a good, strong team. And he's just, he's moving forward. And, you know, MC Dons is another one under the radar. So we've got a few guys, you know, like Mower FC, Long Live the King. Very strong. I'm scared of them as well. They're a very strong, consistent team. Witch Ablet and Mang Spuds, I'm scared because they're sneaking under the radar. And not something... Not two teams I would think that are fourth and fifth. So they're actually, the ones you don't think of are the ones you need to be fearful of the most because you just think, oh, we've, we've got them covered. And then they just turn up and then, then they say, who's your daddy, pretty much. Um, yeah, so, you know, MC Don's under the radar as well. These three guys in the top, top eight uh, under the radar. And we need to be careful of these guys. They can definitely score, outscore us as well. Yeah, along with the King is still 1378 too in points as well so still scoring very well but Stan Spunker's 13,602 now so starting to cause ripples that's why I, I, he's got more of an eye and yeah, Mag Spun's only 13,301 so he's got some work to do but he's kind of sitting fifth so as long as you beat the next person you don't need to score huge you just need to consistently beat the players each each week which you're not going to beat you know you're not going to go up against these teams that are you know, scoring 2,400 each week. You're going to be teams that are scoring 2,100. And as long as you, you match the team that you're playing that week, um, yeah, you're happy as. So, yeah, you know, Blue Pie is another one as well, sitting ninth um, under the radar. But Balls of Fury, I think, consistently, it does really well. And he's just a bit unfortunate last week when we played against him. But, yeah, and some of the other guys as well, uh, scoring very good as well, but just a bit unlucky with their matchups this, uh, in the last few rounds. So let's have a look at the matchups this week. So hold on a sec. See matchups. So winning, in, I'm actually winning in the public league as well in the ladder. So pretty happy with that. So let's have a look at the matchups currently. All right. So this is the matchups. So 25-52 projector at the moment. I have done my trades. But I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm pretty old. I'm actually probably eighty percent sure it actually fits in, which I'll get into after. So we should actually take down two souls. I'm not going to go down lightly because I'm not, I'm not going to think, oh, I've got this covered. It, it only takes one or two like moments of lapses where we already fall apart or we, you know, you lose your captaincy. We don't get your captain right. They get the captain right. You miss a good score and they get a good score and you find out you, uh, yeah, we're actually crying and it just, it just takes a couple of mistakes and yeah, we just need to make sure we get everything right. And for that from Balls of Fury, you know, 2177, 2160, it's going to be a very close matchup. Barry Zeris, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty confident he's going to win. But XC Dons is definitely under the radar, so he might have, um, you know, he might have a few secrets, surprises coming Zeris way. But yeah, Barry Zeris definitely hungry for wins now because he's been scoring extremely well. Just been a bit unlucky with the last few rounds. So um, get a dog up here's another score uh, against Long Live the King. So. You know, long live the king, top four. Uh, he's coming second at the moment. So, um, get a dog up. He's definitely going to try and throw a rocket his way. And, you know, I'll be more than happy if long live the king uh, loses this week. But, uh, very consistent scorer. So, it's going to be a tight one there. 
you know, 24 7 each which able it against Moller FC. Not that that's a top four battle. So this is probably the battle of the round. Twenty you know, these guys are fighting for top four to stay in there. So mm. this would be the round the round here. This, that's my matchup. So we'll, we'll see how, we'll see who wins there. That's very close. Um, who would I think will win? I couldn't even pick it there. Um, yeah, Sly B tweet. 21.98 against the 24.16. I think Stan Spunk will easily take that one down. Uh, Blue Pie is under the radar against Fish and Crisp. Fish and Crisp, um, definitely... Uh, I think, he, yeah, he's definitely going to be hungry now. Looking at his projector at 23.50, I mean, really, he's just... He looks like he's going to be hungry for a win. Blue Pie will want to scrape in the eight this week. If he gets a win this week, he'll probably make the eight. But Fish and Crisp, not in the eight, but will, wants to get some wins. So that's going to be a close battle as well. Bob McKenney needs some work to do against WE Rule. Um, 200 points difference. But like I said, you know, these trajectories, don't be, don't be scared, you know, like you, if you're 200 points down. All it takes is getting the captain right. Um, even loopholing your, your rookies right as well. And... You know, getting it, you know, you getting a rookie that scores the highest rather than the lowest. You know, if you get a rookie that scores 90, but you had to take, but it was on the bench, and you have to take the person that scores 40 on the field. I mean, there you go. There's there's 50 points there, plus your captaincy. And captaincy could be, you know, you, you take the captaincy for a 90 and you get it wrong. You know, and then someone scores 150 and gets 300. So... 180 compared to, you know, say, what was it, like 260 or not even, even more, you know, 300 points a captaincy. It's over 100 points there, and you can easily make up the gap. And anyway, so the second part of the video, I'm going to go through the trade. So, yeah, a few, few exciting matchups coming up our way. All right, so let's have a look at the team. Just fixing up the screen there, thanks. All right, so... What I'm looking at at the moment. So, I'm having Sicily, Chris, short. Um, Hewitt's a big one. i am got to find out the news with Hewitt because he's gonna, they've got to find out the news about uh, how he's training. And if he's an in, maybe I don't upgrade in the defense line. So, my upgrade this week will be Lloyd. So, I'm looking at Gibkes to Lloyd. So, that'll be my big in because Lloyd's at 488. So, 488's cheap. And we know Lloyd's been consistent and for season's end. So is he just a fallen premium? He's not quite a fallen premium, but he's at a discounted price. Someone I didn't think, like I couldn't sleep last night. I woke up at 4.30 a.m. and I thought, oh, let's have a look at the super coach. So I actually saw Lloyd and I saw 488 and maybe it's his time to bounce back. And he's had a few 70s and 80s. Well, he's had two 80s and a 70s from memory. And that's why his scores dropped down a bit. So at the start of the season, he was about 580 or something like that. Um, a lot of people started with him. And yeah, so we actually save 100,000 there for getting him in. You know, so he, he's my in, I'm thinking. And yeah, I had to upgrade a Lloyd because of Hewitt possibly missing this week as well. So if, they, if Carlton's um, going to protect Hewitt, I'll definitely need... Some, I need McCartan to cover... And Gip gets to be upgraded. So that's the reason why I went with Floyd. Um, VC McRae going to Neil. Neil's got Adelaide. Um, McRae just because he's, he's just a consistent scorer. Plus, um, he's going to be... I think he's playing... To, uh, is he playing tonight? Yeah, he's playing tonight. So if you can actually get the VC right on the Friday night, it just makes it so much um, stress-free for the rest of the weekend. Unless, of course, you've got rookies, a loophole. So that's why I usually get the VC. Try and get it early as possible. So tonight it's McRae VC. Hopefully he plays well against Collingwood. I'm not sure who's actually going to be, if there's any taggers or anything like that. But I just know he's consistent. Um, yeah, so who's the other one? So the, the other big thing, too, is I've tr I've switched over uh, N. Martin from Lipsiski. So I had Lipsiski in the midfield last week. and put him in the forward line, and... I think Lipsiski is about 7th or 8th best forward at the moment. So I don't actually need to upgrade Lipsiski at the moment. His break-even is like 60. He's going to make some more cash. 
Um, I could actually, he could almost be a keeper as well if he actually starts scoring, tunning up a bit more. So I could save some trades here. And because I've been aggressive with my trades, I'm, I'm a bit lower on my trades as well. So I've only got 16 left. So if I could save a trade and keep Lazisky, that's a win for me, I think. So, yeah, so then, I, then I've put Martin in the midfield. So looking at getting Martin, keeping Martin, and then trading him up, you know, say McCartan, trading McCartan to and Martin to Oliver. So that's what I'll be looking at doing, or Oliver or a Boke maybe. See, that was the other end I was thinking of. It was either going to be Lloyd or it was going to be Boke this week. I was thinking of Oliver, but I couldn't quite fit him in with the price as well. Because I wanted to go quite a little bit early just for the points. Um, if I go Boyd, he's under price. So anything I don't make with uh, uh, with the, the guy I traded uh, was with uh, McDonald from Hawthorne. So anyone, anything I traded with him, uh, I could make up with uh, the discounted price as well. Because Bo could definitely be, um, you know, go up sixty to eighty thousand. And I think McDonald won't hit three hundred thousand, not this season anyway. And I'm not sure if he's going to get selected. So that's the reason why I'd probably pick Bo if I don't pick Lloyd. Um, so yeah. So you're going to notice another thing too is Hamilton. I've so I put in Hamilton for McDonald. Just to get that cash in, and so I got lowered at a discounted price. Uh, went, and I forgot Hayes playing as well. So, yeah, I've got Pruce. The goal is with Hayes and Pruce. I'm going to trade Hayes eventually and try and get Pruce to Gorn. And we know Wits is probably going to be a keeper at this stage. I'm not going to go Grundy again, that's for sure. And yeah, Dunkley, Parker, Heaney. Already, they're all good. Canigillia is good as well. That's the thing with our forward line as well. There's not many options up there. I mean, there's Hawkins there we can keep an eye on as well. So it's Lipsiski to Hawkins. Some people probably go on Jeremy Cameron, which could be another one that's pretty good because of his high ceiling. But yeah, just, I'm, I'm really good. I'm really glad how I went early on Rioli as well. This is, that's what really saved me the last week because I went Rioli early. I did go Rizas early as well, but he's been a bit, with the 18, um, a little bit slow, but uh, we don't need him to score huge. I mean, we just need to get probably about 100, 150,000 off him and then upgrade Limpsiski to the best forward there is. So if that's if we need to. So Proust the Gorn, Limpsiski to or Hawkins or... You know, sometimes there'll be someone that just turns up and outscores everyone. So maybe if Lazisky to English, English comes back and he starts averaging 120 plus. Um, we've got to keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, Martin, so Sir Martin's probably not Boak or Oliver. But at this stage, if I don't go Boak this week with Martin, I inst oh yeah, if I don't, I, well, I'm not trading Martin, obviously. But I would probably upgrade Lazisky to Boak or Lazisky to Oliver. So probably Boke this week. In the future, I'd probably get Oliver because I'll have more cash. So it makes sense to get Oliver in later when I'm offing on a bit, but it's the nature of the beast. And I got Clark in last week as well, which hopefully he does, get play. He does play. But that's the problem when you have uh, West Coast and Freo players in your team. You don't know if they're going to get, you know, get called up to play until later in the game, so later in the round. So I think hopefully Clark does play if he doesn't play, it's not a big deal. We, he's going to make... Hopefully, he does play in the buy round. So, I mean, he had a good round the first time he played. So, we'll just have to hold on and just wait for this out. And, yeah. So, just to recap, Lloyd was my sneaky upgrade. So, yeah. Oliver Lloyd. If he plays, I'm going to go Oliver or Boak from Lisiewski instead. Uh, v and McRae, Neil. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And just Proust the Gorn eventually. Yeah. And then just slip in and all of it in the future. And, uh, you know, Whitfield as well. Whitfield could get all Doherty if he doesn't turn around. So I'll be looking at Doherty. Um, yeah, even Dawson. Like, I even was um, prom promoting Dawson at the start of the season as well. Which I didn't actually go in because he is probably worth a little bit more. I think we went for the cheaper option instead. So, yeah, so Whitfield, you could probably go Doherty, you could go Dawson from Adelaide as well. So, and just looking at the buy rounds, I'm going to have a few issues with the buy rounds. 
So, you know, anyone that's going to get me on the buy rounds might possibly sneak a win here. I mean, I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe with Clark playing. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I've got 17 active players here. So I'll definitely probably have to look at um, the next trading. You know, um, yeah, Martin de Oliver will be one. So Martin's not playing this for this round. So Martin de Oliver will definitely be another player as well. So that'll be a good thing. Proust is not playing so like this round. So if I had Proust to Gorn, Martin to Oliver, there could be two things to, to sway in my favor for this buy round. So we could definitely have enough players there. So, um, so yeah, you got three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, it's, 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 it's going to be tricky because now I'm going to be trading Hayes, you know, Bruce Martin for this round as well. So, you know, it's sort of like robbing Paul to save Peter or whatever you, what's that saying? Um, you can say it in the comments as a rob Paul to save Peter or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm either protecting one round to lose the other. So I think there's going to be one round where we're all going to struggle. Um, but yeah, round 14 looks like it's going to be very cruisy so at this stage, but yeah, I'm going to have a huge issue with the buys, especially the first two rounds. I mean, I'm either going to struggle, I'm either going to struggle the 12th round, or I'm going to struggle the 13th. I'll probably just going to struggle the 13th. I can, you know, 13 is unlucky, so I might as well just, uh, pick 13 to be unlucky with, I guess. I might be the opposite, I might actually get lucky that round. But anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, and also, there's another player as well. So, I haven't got him in, but if you're looking at a midfielder and you can price him in, definitely get a Jack Carroll as well. Jack Carroll looks like he's a good, um, will be a good find to get because he's going to be scoring consistent, I reckon. And he just seems to fit into the Carlton side very well. So, go, um, go Jack Carroll if you can. Oh, I can't fit him in, unfortunately, so... Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.